Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today, we've got something a little bit different for you. We're going to be doing a nine SUV shootout. This is the full size SUV challenge. And this is part two, so if you wanna see part one and part three, be sure to go to the channel and check those out. Let's go ahead and get into it. A few caveats on this one. This is how the vehicles performed on the day that I drove them, and this was done over the course of a few years. So the conditions change, the, how wet the soil is, how torn up the steep hill climb is. Oddly enough, the high-speed section remains fairly consistent. There are a couple vehicles that had to be tested elsewhere, but overall, there are going to be a lot of varying conditions, and it is my opinion on this video, so take it for what it's worth but be sure you enjoy it. I'm going to try to interrupt as little as possible, but I do want to talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. So I'll go through a bunch of various different drive modes typically in all these vehicles. Right now it's in four wheel drive auto and this has a clutch based center differential in the transfer case. And the other thing I'm trying to do is go as slow as possible. So you'll see I'll stop and let the vehicle settle whenever I make a tough climb and then I'll proceed after that. Carrying momentum, it would have made it up the hill much easier. It's a much harder test if I'm going slow and stopping whenever I do gain that momentum. The rear locker on this one is an electronic limited slip unit, so it's not a true locker, but it will apply the clutches very tightly, simulating locker. In most cases it won't slip, but there are times when it can slip. Two things you'll notice in this clip and the next one. One is throttle control. It's much easier in full drive low to go the speed I want to go. It's much smoother and more controllable. And then two, you'll notice in this next clip when the rear differential is locked, there's a lot more side to side slipping on the rear end than there is when the rear differential is not locked. And that is typical of all vehicles. So keep your eye out for that in other vehicles in this test. One other major thing is there will be a lot of comments about the tires, the tires aren't made for this, whatever, across the lineup there's going to be some luxury vehicles in here. Don't worry about the tires so much, don't focus on those. This test is more about the vehicle's ability to transfer power to the wheels with traction. So you'll see the Escalade is just spinning three wheels like crazy, transferring power to the fourth wheel fairly well actually. And that one is probably a case of the tires a little bit and not as much the system. So yes, having the proper tires for the train is very important. But again, this test is focusing on the ability of the vehicle to transfer equal power to all four wheels, therefore getting the best amount or best traction possible, the most traction it possibly can, and being able to you know, make these climbs because it's getting the power where it needs to be, not because the tires are better than a different vehicle's tires. Listen for a thunk in this next clip. I don't know if you caught that early on, but that was the transfer case shifting into two wheel drive only because it is a clutch based system and it was getting too hot.
All right, we're in four wheel drive low. I'm gonna go ahead and hit manual mode. When you're in four wheel drive low, it automatically goes to second gear. I don't know if you're seeing that, but so I'll hit manual, manual, there we go. And then I'll shift down into first. So I'm gonna go down this hill and I do want the rear locked just for more control. It's pretty gnarly. This thing's all sorts of torn up right now. It's hard to see with the mirror and everything in the way. But we'll do our best here. Let me get the front view. I don't know why it's doing the rear. There we go. And we are, this one's only showing 18 degrees, 19. About 19 degrees. So I'm gonna get past this roughest spot. I'm still riding the brakes, and you can use the uh, hill descent control. My foot's off the brake now, but it's just a little bit too fast for me right now. Um, it works great. Uh, I just didn't like how fast it was going for this tiny section here. And now we can let off. So this is engine braking. We're about three miles an hour. Yeah, I don't think we went over three miles an hour there. So not bad, four wheel drive low. And definitely did pick up a little bit there. There are a couple things I wanna talk about here on the second gen Sequoia. It does have my favorite transfer case of any vehicle. So it is a Torsen limited slip transfer case with, or center differential in the transfer case with an electronic locking feature. And this is really good because you can be in four wheel drive low and drive on pavement without it binding. This makes it really easy to back trailers uphill while turning, all that kind of stuff. It's just a, a really good, transfer case center differential setup that is gone away. So you can, in the new 300 series Land Cruiser or whatever, it still has that same transfer case, but you don't get the two-wheel drive option. So in my opinion, the Sequoia had the best transfer case on the market. It doesn't have any clutches or anything, but it's still a limited slip, thanks to the Torsen style limited slip. And it has, again, the electronic locking feature. You can see how well the brake based traction control system works and when you disable traction control it completely shuts that off. So you can see here it's just spinning the wheels but when you turn the traction control back on you'll see it transfer power side to side. This is the A-Track system. I know that they try and make it special on some of the vehicles where you have the A-Track button but it's the same system across the lineup in the Sequoia, the Land Cruiser, Forerunner, Tacoma, Tundra. They all have A-Track. And it is a really good system. It's really controllable. And they don't offer a rear differential lock in the Sequoia TRD Pro or Tundra TRD Pro for this second generation. That will come back in the third generation and be an option. And that is really the one thing that this vehicle lacks that I would have loved to see. And it does, like I said, show up in the new generation, but we don't get that Torsen style limited slip center differential in the newer models. The Land Cruiser has a similar transfer case to the Sequoia. There is no two-wheel drive option, and it also features multi-terrain select and crawl control, which are just additional computer aids that tune the multi-terrain select will tune the aggressiveness of the brake-based limited slip system, and crawl control actually applies the throttle, goes at a set speed, so you can set it up to like five miles an hour or whatever, and it tries to stay at that set speed and it will add throttle and apply brakes to the spinning wheels as needed to transfer power to the wheels that have better traction.
And now I'm gonna hit the multi-terrain select. Oh, it went to auto, there we go, okay. Here's the crawl control. I'm gonna go high speed. So the faster you go, this is all the way up, the less ABS pump you hear. And you can see it's flashing all four wheels because it's really controlling all four wheels. Okay, we're at the obstacle, so I'm gonna put it down into first, or to the lowest speed setting. No, no feet on the pedals right now. And if I hit this right, right there. So we're starting to slip. And it just kind of works its way through it. So I'm not touching the gas or brake or anything, just letting it work out its own way to make it up the hill. And there you go. Flip it back up to as fast as it will go. We're in four-wheel drive high terrain mode. Terrain mode automatically turns off traction control and we're doing the steep hill climb. Let's give it a shot. Trying to go basically as slow as I can. And we are gonna take the hard line with the race suspension. I think we have the clearance to do this. The rear differential on this thing is an electronic limited slip. I can feel it engaging and the ABS engaging. Oh, well, here we are. This is the toughest spot. There we go. We got a major wheel lift there. This is a pretty fun spot to be. Let's see if we can climb out of it. So, I'm going to back down, try one more. That's so crazy, so tippy right there. There we go. And... I can't quite figure it out. So when I push on the brake, it's stopping me and holding me there. There we go, that's a little bit better. I think the terrain mode was being all goofy. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's a hole basically just right above the hood and that's where the rear wheel was. So we're gonna go to the left of that. I need to maybe bring out my pickaxe and fill in just that one little hole because it seems to be stopping a lot of vehicles. And uh, every time I drive this, it seems like the hard line is much harder. So we're taking the, what would have been much harder than anything we had when we first started, but there is still a harder line here. Front left wheel is clear in the air. Let's see if it figures it out. Half throttle. Full throttle. Can't do it. Just can't do it. So we're gonna back off. We're gonna do the easy line. I thought for sure we'd have it that time, but. Let's try again from here on the hard line, and I'm just gonna go full throttle right now. There we go. So, with a little bit of momentum, it can do the hard line, but definitely no crawling. I hate to break it to you, but that's all we're gonna do on this one with 22 inch rims, 
being a luxury vehicle, I'm a little bit nervous on that hill. We are in four-wheel drive auto, doing the steep hill climb, and we're gonna do the hard line first, of course. Traction control is on. We're just in regular, not snow mode or anything. This is how you drive it every day. Okay, so it's just inching forward. <clears throat> I can make this little spot, but I don't think I'll make the next one. So I'm going to switch to four-wheel drive auto with traction control off. So here we go. So much better on throttle control because it lets you spin the wheels with traction control off. So I don't have to, I'm not even half throttle right now. Full throttle, it is still struggling quite a bit. Calling that quits. And we'll go to four high locked. See if that makes any difference. Okay, struggling there even. Four wheel drive low. Four drive low automatically turns off traction control. Now we have better gearing. And we're so close. I'm full throttle, it's still cutting throttle on me. But can't quite make it in this spot. Wow, I'm very surprised that it wasn't able to do that. We're gonna change line just a little. And... There we are. Much more of a workout than I expected. Was able to do it, but definitely took a lot of effort. And off the brakes. We're below five miles an hour. It's not too bad. Back on the brakes so we don't hit the front end. All right, not too bad at all. <clears throat> Uh, this is one of the other things with the patrol is it has lower gearing as well and like I said in the US there's just not a lot of aftermarket support for this either so if you want to get better systems you might be importing parts from Australia so it's hard to see all these notches look almost the same but it is in four low and it says L4 there, four low. And then we're gonna hit multi-terrain select and it does show it here. So there we are, rock mode. And let's back it up. Sorry, I'm out of breath, been running up and down the hill a couple times to make sure one, I could make the top and two that I had to set up the camera. So anyway, there you see the camera system showing the tires in four low it changes so you can see the driver's side and passenger side tires a little better. And this is steep. I'm not even sure why it was beeping. Shows all four wheels lighting up there. But we are currently, uh, that says, 30 degrees? All four wheels are 
spinning. So we're on about a 10 degree side slope, 28 or so up. Um, wow, that was sliding a lot. So we're in reverse, crawl control, lowest speed, and let it do its thing. Interesting, uh, it's probably because the brakes are wet, but, and you can see it's the front end that's sliding, not the rear. There we go. All right, let's turn that up one speed. Okay, we'll try it with a tiny bit of momentum. Or should we just try crawl control? Let's just try crawl, crawl control in drive. So we'll go up to the mid-level speed on the crawl control. Apparently I just drove through a bush. That's not good. And right here's where I got stuck. Crawl control almost had it. not gonna happen uh, crawl control down to level one the traction control is what's flashing that's what's getting me here so I'm hard on the brakes and it's just sliding on the front there's no weight on the front end at all I'm trying to get out of this bush so let's try it again see if I can change my angle enough to get out of the bush there we go there we are. Okay, so we'll go back to rock mode and try it with a tiny bit of momentum. I figured this hill was too steep and too loose, but with it being wet, might have had a chance. Okay, multi-terrain select. We're in rock mode. Drive. Here we go. We are so that was pretty darn steep i'm glad we made it i'm probably not going to be doing that anymore now we're going back into four wheel drive auto and you push this down when you're going between four low and four high or five, four high and four low you push it down and twist it um, we're back in four auto now traction controls on and let's give this a shot here I love SUVs, especially big ones, because they can handle that approach angle. Okay, first set of holes here. And it gave up. Traction control is now off. I am full throttle. Sitting at just over 2,000 RPM. It's doing it, but man, is it a workout. Full throttle again. This one I don't think it's going to do. Oh. It lost it there, so I don't know what happened. But it lost it. So now we'll go back over to here, see if we can get it into four low. There it goes. Drive, accidentally hit tow mode. We'll just hit snow mode, a little bit more precise control here. It's certainly jerky, I can hear the ABS going, but it can make that. There we go. I need my camera because there is a boulder on the right side. Looks like we just missed it. And just cleared the approach angle there. All right. Well, that was a workout. 
but it's able to do it. And these tires, this is actually the first time where I ran out of tire. I was in a different spot, but the tires were really struggling just because it's so muddy out here. I mean, it's not super muddy, but muddy enough that they're just getting gummed up. And yeah, the tires weren't able to do it. So yeah, not too bad. It was able to make the steep, hardest section of the steep hill climb in four wheel drive low, four wheel drive high. As long as you turn off traction control, it does all right. All right, we are in four high. I'm gonna switch it over to off-road mode. We're already at the off-road height. And taking the hard line. Gears to see how this E LSD works here. Oh boy, it's really struggling. Oh wow, that was a wheel lift that we didn't expect. It's it's working through it. Right here, hardest climb of the hill. Floor high, ELSD, I could hear the ABS pumping. And we got it. Oh, that was fun. Wonder if uh, Jeep Man down there is gonna come back up. Okay, we'll just try uh, floor low now. Why am I on the blank page? There we go. Come on, shift into four low. Got it. Okay. We're drive low, first gear. And oh, I need to readjust. But we are going to go. Jeez. You gotta stand on the brakes in four low. We're gonna go down this now. Check out that 42 to 1 ratio. Okay, there we go. Low, four low. We're still in the higher off-road setting. And oh, maybe I should have gone even higher. I'm on the brake. This is not engine braking. There we go. Go here. And there's one big hole here, right there. <laughs> Pretty sweet wheel lift. Okay, off the brakes. Oh, pretty, pretty good. Four or five miles an hour. It's not too bad at all for this. Okay, we are in four low. Right here, we're in the off-road drive mode, the off-road suspension height, and uh, traction control and stability control are automatically off, but you saw the traction flashing there, and that was because uh, the the brake limited slip. So um, I may or may not have lost air suspension, so. Man, this thing revs. Quite a bit in four low. I love that new wheel lift. That wasn't on this line before. And it might just be the mass of this vehicle. You can see it's showing which wheels are spinning. Running out of gas here. scrape nope no scrape all right sweet well that was fun um i was pretty low on fuel and putting it on that incline oh made it think that it was completely done so anyway that's a fun little line it's a fun drive all right let's find a terrain mode let's go to rock lock the rear you know what let's go to mud because 
Oh, it's trying to lock the rear right there. This is gonna be pretty loose, not real stable like rock would be. Just ran up and down the hill, so I'm breathing hard. Come on, rear. There we go. If you're gonna get your lockers to engage, turn the wheel a little bit, create the differential, allow the two slides to rotate at different speeds and lock together. I don't think I can make this breakover angle. I was gonna go at it fast the first time, we'll go slow. And if we don't make it, we'll back down and try again faster the second time. I was gonna say, well, we made it, but spoke too soon. Uh, downhill assist. How do I slow it down? Yep, low two. And. Hopefully, this can figure itself out. I was on the brakes myself. There's a bush, that one on the right, right there. That is a little bit at risk of scratching the vehicle. There we go. All right, I did pretty well. Maybe nervous at first when I was just sliding, but let's go up a speed. So to change the speeds, you just rotate it. And you can see there, now I'm on low one instead of low two. There we go. Okay, the uh, crawl control is not gonna make it up this. I tried it in the Lexus in much better circumstances conditions and it didn't make it so go back to multi-terrain select still in mud mode rears locked and we're gonna give it a little bit more from the start this time and we're high centered there we go yep not gonna make it okay Let's go ahead and switch it back into drive. And the crawl control is still on. We're still on the mid speed. Let's drop it down, low one. And it will start to hunt for traction here. The rear's locked. We'll talk about this. I have a video that may come out before this Sequoia does that talks about all the different all-wheel drive modes and you know lockers and all that kind of stuff and when to use them. So it's on for traction. You can't hear the ABS pump. That's a big improvement over the the Tacoma 4Runner and Land Cruiser of the previous generation. The current Tacoma still has that where you can hear the brakes. But anyway, I'll just go around. I think I can back off of this hill. Yeah, we'll just go straight back, drive around. Anyway. Yeah, the, the new crawl control system is much smoother. They say it's way faster. And instead of like open closed valves, it's using a spherical valve. And that allows it to function smoother and quieter because it, it's just gradually opening and closing instead of hard open, hard close. For the steep hill climb, we have some features here and I rated them zero, one, and two. Zero is no locker, no limited slip, whatever. One is electronic limited slip or regular limited slip. And a two is a manually selectable locker or in the case of the center differential, no center differential at all. So we see number seven, we have a three-way tie with the Infiniti QX80, the Nissan Armada, and the Cadillac Escalade. Coming in at number six, we have the Ford Expedition FX4. Following that, at number five, we have the 2020 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. Coming in at number four, we have the 2022 Chevy Tahoe Z71. The first one on the podium is the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser at the number three spot. Coming in at number two is the 300 series Land Cruiser in form of the 2022 Lexus LX600. Thanks to a full locking rear differential and no center differential along with the really effective brake based traction control and the best crawl ratio of the bunch, the 2023 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro takes the number one spot in the steep hill climb section. 
If you want to see more, be sure to check out the links down below for both the links to the spreadsheets and also links to each of these vehicles and their full off-road reviews. If you haven't already, be sure to check out part one, which is the high-speed off-road section, and then part three, which will be the approach angle departure, breakover, skid plates, underbody protection, anything that hangs down. Kind of a subjective category there as well. So anyway, check out those parts so you can get the full picture on the overall testing. Thanks for watching and have a great day.